the issue that we have is that the the minister and by the way he's not a right honorable he's just an honorable oh uh, sorry i, I he, promoted him past his status yes you did you certainly did and i was a bit shocked actually but uh, uh the issue is that the new zealand on a criteria on public interest journalism specifically says that eligibility to apply for the fund must include all of these things. And one of them is commitment to Te Triti or Waitangi and to Māori as their treaty partner. So how does one, for example, let's say an ethnic um, newspaper or TV or radio station uh, show that they have a obvious commitment to Te Triti when they speak in their other language, for example, let's say a Korean language. So if they speak in Korean language, does that mean that they obviously don't have a commitment to Te Triti? So those um, ethnic media often do not get actually get funding. I think this is a really interesting issue you raised, Melissa. And that is that in current parlance or, or the current trend in government, and amongst bureaucracy is that the treaty is a partnership between pa Pakia and Māori, the Crown and Māori, and it seems to me in that if you create a world like that or a world view like that, there isn't much room for other groups in our society, uh, groups including our Indian community or our, any immigrant community, uh, our Pacific Islands community. It seems to me that commitment to Tariti creates a very literally black and white view of the world which would tend to exclude other New Zealanders. I think that's how most um, ethnic communities actually feel because they feel they are being left out of the conversation when they talk about the treaty because, as you said, it is actually between Māori and the Crown. But when you talk to people uh, who apparently knows this issue, Crown reflects all of New Zealand other than Māori. So we are apparently included. But when you look at the uh, eligibility criteria for the PIGF funding, it doesn't, it really excludes people who have no um, specific uh, dedication to the 3D issues or uh, Te Reo Māori. And, you know, television, as you know, television broadcasting is actually about that, the medium. It's either broadcasting uh, uh, with pictures or uh, with voice, with radio or newsprint. And it is actually about news stories. And how can you actually reflect or have a commitment for the treaty? Does this commitment, um, you know, uh, criteria mean that every story has to be about Māori and Te Reo Māori? Um, I, I just don't see how it can actually put in those kinds of criteria on um, journalism. Mm. Um, another community I think actually mentioned specifically elsewhere in the committee was the Indian community have found it pretty hard to get funding. Yeah, exactly. I know for a fact that several uh, radio stations try to um, apply for uh, funding uh, through the PIJF fund, and I know that they have been um, rejected several times. And if you get rejected twice, you you don't get a look in again, unless you know um, the chief at New Zealand on Air decides that they're going to get another another um, another go at it, another bite at the cherry. I, it, it's just ridiculous. I just you know I'm just glad that it's apparently going to be over. Because well, I they say that, think... didn't they say that? Don't they? But New Zealand on Air and New Zealand on Air funding will continue, won't it? Well, hmm, well, the PIGF funding specifically, the $55 million that the government had actually earmarked, uh, they still have about $19 million left um, in that pot of money. Um, they have until uh, end of this financial year, so uh, end of June like, next year to actually um, uh, fund uh, programs. But, you know, I, I just don't see how government can fund news. I mean, you know, and to expect you know, media entities who take the money, millions of dollars, to remain um, impartial, balanced, or fair. I mean, effectively, I mean, I've accused them of that, you know, that they, they, they can only be mouthpieces for the government. And, you know, the perception in the public is that they have become that. And I think a lot of media that have actually taken PRJ have funding are somehow are regretting it now. Well, why, uh, I would say, why don't they give the money back so the deal's off? That would be the right thing to do, wouldn't it? 
um, that could potentially be the way because, you know, um, effectively it's, uh, it's to help them actually in a difficult time. And if they don't play ball, they could potentially call that money back. So, you know, maybe they should volunteer to pay it back. Mm. But the damage is already done, though. I mean, the trust in media has actually dropped dramatically. And I think I was talking to stakeholders. I mean, you know, I, I speak to many media, mainstream media, just to see, especially because of the RNZ, RNZ and TVNZ merger. I've just been going around talking to a lot of media. And, you know, that brings about, you know, other other topics. And PIJF has actually been on the top of the list. And, you know, I asked them specifically, I said, do you regret taking PIJF money? And they said, yeah. But they won't give it back. <laughs> funny, funny, isn't it? I want to ask you another question, and we, we talked earlier about, if you like the binary view of the world, that certainly the guidelines in the PIJF and in the Rights of Indigenous People, the binary nature of the society that it would seem through Hipuapua, the Hipuapua report, which is government policy, even if the Prime Minister says it's not, that it doesn't create a lot of uh, room for a multicultural New Zealand. And there is no doubt that that is, is what we are. I want to ask you personally a question. Do you consider yourself, Melissa Lee, a Pākehā? No. OK, so what are you? If the relationship is all about between, you know, um, Tangata Whenua and Pākehā, where do you fit in that? Um, I am... Melissa Lee, I am a Korean New Zealander. I am not Māori. I'm not Pākehā. Yeah. Um, but you are a citizen of New Zealand and you should have the same rights. Exactly. I hold a, I hold a New Zealand passport and very proudly. Yeah. Um, I'm presuming that if there were a change of government, you would have a portfolio and given your experience and, and time in Parliament, uh, and I presume you're standing again, you're going to stay in politics, Melissa? All right. You're going to have... Uh, just... Yeah. And you will... Certainly I am. Yeah. You will serve at the pleasure of whoever's leader of the National Party, I'm sure. Exactly. What would, what would be your plans going forward? What would be your thoughts and idea as regards the public funding of broadcasting uh, and I journalism? Not, I certainly would not um, uh, fund news. Um, I certainly would not be doing the PIJF funding, uh, giving out $55 million to media uh, to control the narrative. Um, I believe that the fourth estate um, <clears throat> plays a very important role in, in, in our lives. And I think you need to um, champion the rights of the media to critique the government and be free uh, um, from interference from government to do their job to hold the government to account. And I think that is, you know, that is something that I, I, I would actually do. But I mean, you know, look, I've always been a champion of local content. And the sector has, you know, media has actually changed dramatically as sure you know, and we're now, you know, talking on the internet. Uh, you know, I'm not on a telephone, I'm talking to a radio. Um, and, you know, people can actually see me on, on this video yeah, as can. well. I, yeah. I don't know if you can actually see it or not. Yeah. But the thing is that the consumption of media has actually changed. No longer are people watching linear television anymore or mm. are they actually listening to radio traditionally. I think the important thing is, you know, there are content that needs support and I will be focused more on the content. If, if the government was focused on developing content that is actually suitable for promotion in multiple platforms, I'll be right there backing them up. Yeah. But instead, they're, for example, for the merger of TVNZ and Radio New Zealand, they're just creating a monolith of an entity uh, not focused on content. You know, it's about structure and, you know, uh, posturing saying, yeah, we've created this, you know, um, uh, public interest media outlet. And to me, it's just BS. PR, actually, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, we should be focused on content All right. and if promoting you, New Zealand. Yeah. If you were in government, would New Zealand on air be making um, multiple documentaries about a young Green MP and how wonderful she is? <laughs> well, actually, ministers uh, shouldn't actually influence content, but I, I would have a very strong... Uh, um, uh, expectation uh, of New, New Zealand on air uh, not to be wading into the political sphere. 
to promote a particular MP. I mean, if it was a fair go, for example, if they're going to be doing a documentary about politicians, it should be fair, not only about Green, but, you know, it should be right across the board. They should have picked, you know, young MPs from all parties and actually talk about their experiences. That's hilarious. That's exactly the conversation I had at a dinner party about a week ago. I said, if she was worthy of it, you should have gone through and got every young MP from every young party and, and found out what their lives were like. Um, exactly. And you would have had some diversity. I mean, Simeon Brown is very young. Yeah. You know, uh, Brooke Van Belden is actually young. I mean, there are many young MPs. If it was focused about the young MPs in Parliament and their experiences, I would have said, you know, there's plenty yeah. to choose from. Yeah, me from, too. I would including agree. Including from the Labour Party. And I think they specifically chose a particular MP because the the, um, uh, the people um, who are doing the documentary are aligned to that particular party. So I don't know. Yeah, but you surely would have thought that if there was genuine impartiality amongst the people running New Zealand on here, they would have picked that up. That would seem to suggest that the board and maybe executive members of New Zealand on here are kind of bent. Well, uh, the board is actually appointed by the government, so I don't know. So, you know, what can I say? I, I don't well, want to criticise them. Because you can say in a free country, <laughs> Melissa, you can say anything you want. And you can say anything well, you want on the platform. I don't think the should actually dictate what New Zealand On Air does. But the thing is, it's like, look, they have certain expectations of performance from the minister. And as far as I'm concerned, this documentary that, you know, um, mm. yeah, I, 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 I just think there is a better way to deliver that kind of story. And it should have been fair. All right. What about, let's take another example, seeing we're on this, of public broadcasting. Patty Gower on booze. Um which, from my understanding... I didn't see that. Actually. No, neither did I. I was, at, I was at the pub. Um, but it seems <laughs> to have been... It seems to have been a documentary uh, pretty one-sided, um, when, in fact, booze figures and harmful booze figures are going in the right direction of New Zealand. We've got someone from the alcohol industry later on, on later on, to give the counterfactual to that. Um, but it's kind of a bit like Matariki. We seem to have a whole lot of government departments... That propagandise to us, Melissa. Tell us what to think, not how to think. Yeah, we do. Well, I guess it's 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 about depend. I, I think that's probably the reason why a lot of people uh, look for options in terms of their media consumption. Uh, I think the reason why a lot of people actually move away from mainstream um, uh, media is because they don't trust it and they actually feel just like you said, you know, it's propaganda and they don't actually trust it. So they go and find some other option to actually watch. Obviously, you know, with the advent of the internet and, you know, faster connections, people can actually watch news and content from all over the world and much cheaper um, uh, than having to pay premium, for example, for some. And uh, <clears throat> I think, you know, um, yeah, I choose it. I choose uh, my content as well. I, I, I don't know the last time I actually physically turned uh, a TV channel on. Have you downloaded uh, the do platform app thing. yet, Melissa? <laughs> I bet you haven't. That's I may a, have. That's a guilty <laughs> smile, so you go on your device. It is. I will. Do, I promise to you download promise it. You promise to do it. We, look, you know we can trace you through it too, so I'll know whether you've done it or not. <laughs> Oh, damn it, maybe I won't download it then. <laughs> hey, Melissa Lee, thank, thank you so much uh, uh, for joining us. I know your schedule is busy, and thank you for your work uh, at Parliament and your work in broadcasting over many, many years. Um, I hope you enjoy Matariki, your your marvellous Pilates Sabaru weekend. <laughs> that is I won't be watching the five-hour pro- broadcast. <laughs> That is, um, that is Melissa Lee, the National Party spokesperson on broadcasting. Interesting exchange yesterday.